Oh, it's rather cold in this crypt, Holmes. Have you found something, Mr. Holmes? You must be Sherlock Holmes, am I right? The Chief told me to help you. What can I do? Can you help me to identify certain weapons that are found here? No problem. That's easy. Show them to me, and I'll tell you what they are. We call this a spear. During the Middle Ages, it was called a glaive. This hook is a back to Corbin, or crow's beak as it's sometimes called. It was complemented by a hammer or spike. It's a bardiche, a type of Polak. a partisan, a hasta.
can, Mr. Holmes. That, quite simply, is a sword. A morning star, a club-like weapon, quite popular with the English army. It's a bat, Holmes. Indeed, Watson. It is scared of our light, as many members of its species are. It will be very hard to attract it, and even harder to capture it. If only we could disorient it. Perhaps by pointing a beam to flash a bright light at it. Listen, stay here and prevent it from escaping while I go look. This instrument will give me a strong, bright light. Watch out! Protect your eyes! You got it, Holmes. And as a bonus, you got a nice photograph also. What do you suggest I do with a photograph of a bat, Watson? Give it to Sergeant Wayne. It's his camera. The animal is holding a small piece of paper between its paws. The message written on this paper is illegible. Hear a bird, Holmes. You are right, Watson. Come, we'll have to climb to the wall walk. Closed. I believe a bird on the roof was speaking, but I don't understand what it said. I must find a way to approach it. what his name is. This bird seems to be remarkably well-trained. 
How can I find your name? Beautiful but impish. You search for her name. Long ago, on you she played a trick. Or was it your heart that she did prick? German bird or eagle? They're one and the same. Elementary. The message written on this paper is illegible. Well done, Holmes. We are supposed to find six birds, and there is one missing. Two possibilities. Either one of the birds has flown and taken our hopes with it, or, despite our misfortune, there is still a chance that the last bird is completely diurnal and is perched somewhere awaiting the day. What shall we do, Holmes? Stay up, Watson, and wait. Wait for the dawn and the first signs of life from the bird. Watson, Watson, I hear a bird's call. It would appear that our prayers were answered. We must seek it quickly, Watson. Incredible. Based on this bird book, it is a Lemergier. I have heard about them, but I have never seen one with my own eyes. Since you never leave our lodgings, I'm surprised that you've even heard talk of them. Now what? Lemergier, Watson. If only it was Greek and had a great big turtle. Oh, what? A turtle, Watson. Have you never heard of Aeschylus, the philosopher? I must still be sleeping. This is all a dream. Maybe the whole thing has been a dream. It must be the side effects of the nightmare I was having. Any moment, Mrs. Hudson will... Watson, get a hold of yourself, man. You aren't dreaming. Our mission, England's honor. Holmes, did I really hear you talk about a Greek, bearded vulture, a turtle, and a philosopher all in the same sentence? Indeed, Watson. Listen carefully. Aeschylus was an ancient Greek philosopher. He had a phobia of enclosed spaces and would never enter a building of any kind. This was as a result of the fact that it was predicted that he would die by being crushed by a roof. Do you know how Aeschylus died, Watson? His skull was smashed by a turtle that fell from the skies. We cannot escape our destiny. A turtle carries its house on its back, and its shell is its roof. But where did this turtle come from, and why did it fall exactly on the head of this poor man? Some would say that it was the divine power attached to the prophecy. There is, however, a more pragmatic explanation. The Lemergier, or bearded vulture, likes to eat the bone marrow from the cadavers of large animals. To extract the marrow, it grabs the bone in its claws and flies to a great height. Then it lets go over a rocky area, where the bones smash and split open, giving it a lavish feast. Some of them have been observed in Greece behaving the same way with turtles as they normally do with bones, to get at the flesh. Aeschylus was of an advanced age at the time of his death, and his bald head would have reflected light like a smooth rock. Had he been under the shelter of a house, he would never have been hit with a turtle in the first place. I'll let you ponder the philosophical points of the matter, but coming back to our Lemergier, we'll need some bait and something with which to capture the beast. Holmes, I will take care of finding a turtle. I'll return as soon as possible. Really, Watson? I commend your industry and valour. That leads me to find something to trap it. However, Holmes, would you happen to have a few quid on you? No, but you can make a detour via Baker Street. There must be at least ten sovereigns hidden in our lodgings. Just a little memory exercise that I set up. At the boredom, you know.